done yet. There's been a series of aftershocks too, right? Yeah, we've had several places like Califon, uh, Bedminster, Chester, all magnitude twos, and that's something we can expect not only for the next day, but even for the next week, there could be some minor aftershocks. But this was impressive. I mean, we see ones and twos across the area, but when you're pushing magnitude five, that's about one every few decades. It's still classified as a light earthquake. Tell people that experience that though, and there has been some damage now starting to be reported, and often that is felt close to the epicenter. So this happened along what we call the Ramapo Fault. Now, it's not like your faults out west. It was more active some 200 million years ago, but it's still a crack in the Earth's crust, and when it gets stressed, we have quakes. So this one happened at 1023 in the morning near White House Station. Its depth was only three miles. That's considered shallow, and the bedrock on the east coast is harder than the west coast, so it reverberates. That's why it was felt so far and wide, and there are some of the aftershocks that I told you about, about a magnitude two. So this is the strongest East Coast quake since 1884, which is a 5-5, and we've had earthquakes near above five only a few times, dating back to the 1700s, and again, the record's a little shaky back then, no pun intended. The last earthquake we had here was in January near Astoria, about a 1.7. That's more typical, and again, aftershocks may continue, but they're likely to be mild, minor. If you just look at this chart, a little tough to make out, but basically, if you're thinking about seeing another four or five magnitude, there's less than 10% chance of that, but could we get a magnitude up to a magnitude three after today or even after a week, it's not out of the question. We're